why are we not be together on, on? We are now. We're together. He's, he's moaning because I'm filming him and he's saying that I'm never in the film with him. <laughs> but I am because I'm eating his pizza. And he asked me what pizza I wanted, and I said I want Hawaiian, which has got um, ham and pineapple on it. And straight away, he said, "You cannot eat pineapple pizza." So why? Why not? Because it's a gay pizza. <laughs> it's not. I'm sorry. It's not a gay pizza. Not. I don't. Nothing has against gays. <laughs> It's, it's just okay. the word. It's just the word you're using. Yeah, yeah. but it's not a gay pizza though. What, has it got to have meat on it then? Like loads of no, ham. No, no, no. But, but what's the pineapple on a pizza? Mm. But what we got here then? What we eating? Yeah. Tuna, tuna, onions, mm -hmm. uh, olives, and double cheese. Double cheese. This is a man's pizza. No, it's, it's a carp England pizza. <laughs> Well, welcome to Germany. I'm back on the same venue that I fished last month if you watched my vlog then which was uh, titled Summer Road Trip but today what I'm going to be doing is talking to you a little bit about how to catch big carp because I get a lot of people asking me questions about pointers to, towards trying to get the biggest carp out of a lake. Now this particular water that I'm on now it's a very hard water it's got a, a nice stock of fish there's roughly about 50 originals in here of which five or six of them are over 30 kilos or close to so there's some really big carp in here they're really old they've been fished for quite a lot this is probably one of the most famous waters in germany so it gets a lot of pressure on here and the carp have seen everything so it's a great venue really to be talking about big carp fishing now it's my second trip of the year on here i fished here in june for a couple of weeks and i'm back again for just over a week and a half so what i'm going to do is talk to you about some of the things that go through my mind when it comes to targeting the big carp in this venue First night then, and I've uh, got the rods out. I'm pretty happy with what's uh, in front of me. I've just decided to go into um, what's called the U area because um, Nermin's seen one or two decent fish in the corner snag there, and that's where he caught black spot from a few months ago. And he, he reckons also he's just seen it just close in tight to the margins down there, so that's a, a decent starting point. And um, I've also seen one or two fish as well showing it out in open water, so I'm fairly sure there's a few carp about. But um, the one thing that's different about this trip at the moment is there's not a great deal of anglers on the water at the moment and it's because it's been so hot over here over the last few weeks. So the weather is due to change and that's the main reason why I've decided to come out is because I've looked at the, the long range weather forecast and it looks pretty decent for the area. There's a bit of rain and wind coming in, there's a few storms knocking about as well. It is going to be warm but these carp haven't really been caught over the last few weeks because there's been not, not a great deal of pressure on the lake since the, the bigging died in my last vlog. So um, I'm hoping that that lack of pressure is gonna give me an opportunity to get one or two decent fish during the, the nine or 10 days that I've got out here now. So um, let's see where we go. Let's see what happens, eh? First fish. No. Whoa. Whoa. I seem to do all right here on my first night it's because my first trip I managed to catch, I think it was two fish, and uh, 
last night, I had a proper chaotic night. I only caught one carp, which is this one, which is just weighing over 30 pounds. But I had tench, catfish, false indication, all sorts. Proper night of activity, but that's a great way to get off the mark on the first night. Real torpedo fish. I know I managed to catch one on my first night from in the U area, but at first light there was an awful lot of fish showing both sides of the point. So I decided to move, and this is where we are now. We're on the right side of the point. And this is a great area. I fished it on my last trip. It's also done quite a lot of big fish in the past as well. And what you've got is in front, you've just got the, um, the motorway bank over there to the left. It drops right down just in front of there, a couple of rod lengths off, and then it levels out at about 13, 14 foot. And then it starts to gradually come up in front of us here where you've got a massive weed bed. And you're only allowed to use two rods on this lake, so I've obviously got them in different places. I've got the right-hand rod roughly in line with the second pylon that you can see in the distance. It's not very far out, that isn't it? It's just on the edge of the weed. Lead goes down with a right donk there. It's nice and clean. It's nice and smooth. It's clearly getting um, cleaned by the fish. And then the left-hand rod, I've got that in a completely different spot. Not tight to the far margin, but just where the far margin uh, drops down, you get an awful lot of fish that tend to uh, patrol along that margin as they're going from one end of the lake. There's a nice set of pads right down in the far margin on the, um, the far bank, and they certainly live in there. I always see fish in there at this time of the year and they're always going up and down that margin so that also looks a good area and all I've done is I've baited up the area with a few baits I've got a different sizes today I'm using some 26 SLKs I'm using some 18 SLKs I did start using a few smaller baits on my last trip but I did get quite a few tench on those so I've done away with those I'm just going to stick to the 18s and the and the 26s I've got quite a decent spread of bait out there I've probably got about two kilos over each rod and now it's just a case of sitting here and waiting for them. I'm happy to sit in this swim because it's known as a big fish area and if there's one thing that I do make mistakes with when it comes to target fishing I can sometimes be a bit too active, I could be moving around a little bit too often not spending enough time in one swim and sitting over a bit of bait. Now these fish in here haven't really been getting a great deal of bait over the last few weeks so hopefully they're going to be up for a feed because it's the perfect time of the year to sit and wait over a bit of bait. You'll also notice that I've got the rod tips in the air and the reason for that is because there's a lot of weed about. You might remember on my last blog I managed to lose a decent fish in front of this swim and I don't want to be going through that again. It's top to bottom this weed is in 10, 11 and 12 foot and it's quite thick out there so when you hook one of these big fish even with when your leads are coming off they sometimes get into the weed and then it's really hard to get them out of there. So I've got the tips up, I've got no back leads on, I want to try and keep as much of that line out of the water as I possibly can and you'll also notice but where the butt rests are I've got a couple of big pegs there just to hold everything down. I'm not fishing locked up but the clutch or the bait runner as you call it is, is, is set to a, a tension that's not too tight but it's not too slack. The fish can take line if they need to but it's not possible for them to start charging off and, and heading too far into that weed so I'm trying to keep things in my favour. So uh, it's a simple way of, of fishing but it does work and it's perfect for a venue like this. Right, apologies for the church bells that you can hear in the distance. I'm filming this on a Sunday and you might just be able to hear them. But um, I've got the rods in place and I've talked you through where I've put those. And what I want to do now is just cover what I think is the most important part of the big carp jigsaw, which is about having the right frame of mind. I think there's a lot of newcomers to the sport nowadays who think that as long as they've got the latest rig and the latest bait, they can turn up to their local lake and just start wheeling in the big fish. But I can tell you, it does not happen like that at all. I've been carping 40 years and the amount of times I've just turned up to a venue and started catching the biggest fish, I could count on one hand. So, um, you know, most of the time it takes a number of trips, a series of weeks, several months, or indeed, in some instances, a few years until I've got the target fish that I'm after. So you need that right frame of mind to keep following it through from start to finish. Now, the UK especially, you tend to find that um, where there's big carp, there's a lot of anglers. You know, I'm in Germany now, and this particular water is very, very pressured. It happens all the way across Europe, but in the UK especially, we've got a lot of, um, a lot more carp anglers than a lot of European places. So you start to see a lot more pressure on the venues, and where there's a lot of pressure, you start seeing the fish getting very difficult to catch, and you're going to start stacking up the blanks. You know, that's just part of carp fishing. You have to have that right frame of mind to be able to keep going through those blanks to know that sooner or later you're going to get to the fish that you're after. So, you know. 
a lot of the new guys that come to the sport, they start setting their goals at the beginning of the year uh, and I'm going to do this, I'm going to keep fishing this water, I'm going to get the biggins out of there and two or three trips down the line, they've not caught anything, they've seen a lot of pressure, they can't get into the swims that they're after, their head's down and they started deviating and they started fishing other waters. So uh, try and get yourself out of that frame of mind, that's what I'd say. There's nothing wrong with going to another water and having a, a session on somewhere that's going to get you a few bites and lift your confidence up, but don't start deviating off the water where you've originally set your, your, your goal because once you start doing that, you're not going to get to where you are. I was only talking to, to Nermin, one of the local lads here yesterday, who was talking about one of the young guys who fishes this venue. And at the beginning of the year, he was going to fish this place all the time and he didn't catch what he wanted straight away, so he went fishing somewhere else. And then by the end of the, 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 the first part of the year, he's ended up fishing four different lakes. And um, you know that's not the right way to go about target fishing. You need to go through those blanks. You need to be able to be on the lake and know that sooner or later, somebody on that lake is going to catch that target fish and it might not be you. So have that right frame of mind, be very confident in what you're doing and that tunnel vision because it goes a massive long way. That you are here, mate. Yeah, that's it. This moment, you wait for the moments, don't you? Yes. Fight. You sit here all day. The battle is everything. Yeah. Come on, boy. It's a long fish. Nice. Nice. Thanks, yeah. sir. Hi, bro. Bro, thanks for your help, mate. You're welcome. Right. Middle of the afternoon. Wasn't expecting a bite. I was uh, actually stood in Nermin swim. And uh, I think it's been quite a while since I had my last bite. But uh, just had a cracking common that's weighed in at uh, 42 pounds. Really long fish, hard fighting fish as well. And uh, see if I can get it on the camera. <laughs> it's that long I've got to move back. What a beast of a fish. It's like a river fish, that is. Incredible. And thanks to this man, I've managed to get it in because he's, uh, he's been in the water with me as well, ain't you, mate? Good angle, As always. Mate. No, thanks, for your, thanks for your help, mate, as always. The main reason I'm fishing this part of the lake is because it's got a consistent track record of doing big fish and this is the next part of the big carp jigsaw that I want to talk about because I know from talking to the lads on here, this area of the lake, it does fish regularly over, over 30 kilos. The first time I came here it did one of the big ones, um, which was just over 60 pounds at the time and then the second time I came here it did fish close to 70 pounds. So there's that consistent track record. I think the main reason for that is because we've got two parts of the lake, they're known as the old lake here to the right, we've got the new lake round to the left there and they're joined by this channel. Now the fish as they pass between the two different lakes obviously have to come through this channel so if you set a bed of bait somewhere in the region of this channel area, big fish being big fish, they're going to be hungry, they're going to get their heads down and it's a great area to intercept them. But um, the point I'm trying to get here is do your research into the fish that you're trying to catch because the chances are that big carp being big carp they're going to have consistent behaviour. They're generally quite old and they have a routine. They'll live in one area of the lake, they'll feed in different areas of the lake. To give you a couple of examples here, it doesn't matter whether you're fishing a large piece of water or a small piece of water, at the, the extreme end of the scale, we can look at somewhere like the Orient in France where there used to be a big carp in there known as the, the bulldozer, which only ever got caught from one area of the lake known as Gerardo Bay. So if you wanted to catch that fish, you had to be in Gerardo Bay. And whilst Gerardo Bay was quite big in itself, it's just basically no point fishing anywhere else on that lake if you wanted to target that fish. At the opposite end of the scale, we've got somewhere like Withy Pool in Bedfordshire, which is only a couple of acres in size, and there used to be a fish in there known as the 40, which always lived at the back of this one set of snags. Of course it went off around the lake and probably had a feed, but it lived at the back of these snags. It was always in there. If there was another fish in the back of the snags, it was out there having a feed, but it, when it always came back in, it pushed them out of the way and lived in this little area. So it's routine behaviour, and I think that's mainly associated with 
the older the fish are, they know where they want to be, they know the spots where they need to feed, and if you do your research, you can find out so much information. Not just by asking the anglers on the lake, you can also go on social media and take a look at the photographs of the fish that are getting posted. You can see what time they're getting uploaded, you can see whether it's a night shot or a day shot. And you know, if you're an overnight angler, there is no point trying to catch a fish that generally gets caught during the day. You know, you really are stacking the odds against you. So uh, the point I'm trying to get here is do as much research into the fish that you're trying to catch as you can because it could be a massive advantage to you. Sometimes you don't have to get some weird things happening when you're fishing and uh, just walked into the next door swim and there's somebody lying there that just slept there overnight with their dog. So uh, they have fallen out with somebody or just come down to the lake for um, a few hours and just accidentally fell asleep. But I've just had a little look at them now. So, uh, yeah, strange. It's not quite like the, the story that Kevin Nash wrote about years ago in one of his books, which was about a bloke who'd uh, left some lunatic asylum or something and uh, was wanted for murder and he'd ended up sleeping right next to where Kevin was fishing. Yeah, I don't think the person next to me at the moment is, is like that. I think it's just uh, some girl that's randomly fallen asleep by the looks of it. This month's product plug is the Avid Camo Outline. I've had loads of feedback about this main line since I started plugging it on social media. It's the camo version of the best-selling outline which I featured in the vlogs before. Unlike the original outline, this version is finished in a low visibility green with Microflex which provide unrivaled concealment. It has an ultra smooth surface finish making it great for distance casting and it's super strong so ideal for both weed and snags too. Available in 1000 metres or 300 metre spools of 12, 15 or 18 pound, you can find more info about this fantastic line at avidcarp.com. Well, the old temperatures dropped this evening, it's about 15 degrees now, whereas most of the day it's been in the low 30s. But uh, I've got my jacket on, and it's definitely a sign that autumn's on its way, so it's a good time to put a bit of bait out there. And bait is the topic that I want to talk about next when it comes to big fish, because this is a massively important part of the equation. And um, I can go back many years to when I first started working in the fishing industry, and I can remember having a topic of conversation with Rod Hutchinson about big fish baits and Rod was really one of the pioneers when it comes to the modern day bait scene and he said to me that uh, big fish baits exist Crowy and I couldn't really quite fathom it at the time I didn't think that there was baits out there that were catching more big fish than, than other baits but Rod tried to explain it to me and I'll try and do my best now to explain exactly what he said to me and that is that when it comes to catching big fish it's all about percentages you need to put things more in your favour and he said that big fish have a, a real um, tendency to fall for fish meal baits so he said if you're going to be targeting a big one in your lake then you're better off using a fish meal bait he said if you want to catch loads of, of fish of whatever size then use something that's fruity and bright coloured like a yellow and I've stood by those those words over the years now what he wasn't trying to say is that if you use a fish meal bait it'll only catch a big fish what he was trying to say is that it gives you a better chance of catching big fish because of certain ingredients that are used in, in fish meal baits that are more stimulative to the to the bigger fish. Now big fish are generally older fish, and this is where I'm going to try and explain now. The older that something is, whether it's a cat, a dog, a cow, a fish or a human, the older something is, the more its preferences for food has changed over the years. And this is not me talking, this is science talking. If you're looking um, on your, your supermarket shelves, you can see food for kids, food for adults, food for kittens, food for cats, food for puppies, food for dogs. There's millions of pounds of money spent every year researching the food industry, the fish farming industry, uh, and indeed the farming industry. And these are scientists that have done all this work over the years. As, as you get older, your body changes, its nutrient requirements change, and also your taste requirements change as well. You know, when I think back to being a kid, I absolutely hated something like a strong curry, and I favoured something more like pizza and chips. But as I've got older, and having eaten pizza and chips and those kind of foods over the years many many times and then I'm now seeking something a little bit different, my taste buds want something a little bit different and it's the same in all walks of life and this is the, the, the theory of big fish baits is that generally speaking a big carp is an older carp so therefore its taste preference is a little bit different 
and you know this this goes into the fish farming industry and the different types of pellets that they use and the different types of feed that they use and it's obviously washed off in the fishing industry because over the years there's been some absolutely fantastic big fish baits that's been developed uh, I know I'm sponsored by DNA but you know, when, I'm, when it comes to explaining big fish baits, I have to mention all of the other baits that's uh, in the trade over the years. When I worked at Carp Talks, I was there for 24 years. There was definitely cycles with the big fish pref uh, with, with big fish baits. I can remember in the early years of the magazine started, Mainline's Grange absolutely dominated the, the news reports. It was a fantastic big fish bait. There was something in it that definitely stimulated some of the hardest to catch fish. And after that one, it was then Nash's Scopex Squid. Then it was. Uh, Nutribase Trigger, I remember that bait absolutely dominating the likes of Cashin in the south of France which is a really hard fish to water and then in more recent times we've had something like Sticky's Krill and indeed DNA's SLK, you know when I first started working for DNA I knew exactly which bait I wanted to use, it was the SLK because I knew it had a, an absolutely fantastic track record of producing big fish so you know that's um, a brief explanation of, of, of this big fish bait theory. There's certain ingredients that stimulate the big fish. They'll never stop catching smaller fish. You know the session that I'm having now, I've caught fish of all sorts of sizes on the SLK, but I do know that sooner or later when a big fish comes into the area, it's going to give me a great chance of catching a big fish. So um, don't skimp on bait. That's the point I'm trying to make because a lot of the, the top end bait companies like your DNAs, your Nashes, yeah, your um, main lines, etc. They spend absolutely thousands every year on researching the best ingredients to use. So if some of these smaller bait companies that come along and say to you, "Well, our bait's as good as theirs," well, I don't believe it at all. You know, price is reflective of the bait in my mind because you can make a bait with cheap ingredients like soya flour, semolina and put it together for only a couple of quid a kilo. If you want to use the top end quality ingredients then it's going to cost you a few quid and some of the most expensive baits that have been around are also reflective of how good they are as well. Well it might not be a big one but they all count and I'm absolutely buzzing to get that one because I was thinking about moving today. It's red hot, about 28 degrees at the moment and uh, not a great deal has happened over the last 48 hours so when I woke this morning I was thinking yeah I might have a little shift, have a little mooch around, see if I can find some fish so uh, to get that one I think I'm definitely going to stay in this spot. It's very hot this afternoon and it's got to be close to 30 degrees now and you wouldn't really think that the fish were going to be feeding in those temperatures but as this one proves, they certainly are. That is a lovely fish, and it's broken up my day really nicely because it's not nice sitting there just sweating away in the bivvy. Gorgeous. Now the final piece of the big carp jigsaw that I want to talk about today is the topic of rigs. I know there's a lot of people out there that have massive interest in rigs. They're all looking for the latest invention that's going to give them a, an advantage on the waters of the fishing. But for me, when it comes to targeting big carp, the most important part of a rig is that when I eventually do hook one of these big fish, I've got a good chance of getting it in. If you've watched any of my previous blogs, you'll know that my rig doesn't change a great deal depending on where I'm fishing. I've been using the same principle for 30 odd years now. I've taken it all around the globe, caught from small waters, big waters with it, and I'm massively confident with it. The only thing that will change with that rig is that I'll change the components depending on what I'm trying to achieve. If I'm chasing bites, then I'll find everything down. I'll be using small hooks, small hook links, and small leads. But when it comes to big carp, I'll go at the opposite end of the scale and I'll go big. And this is a look at the rig that I'm using today. I've gone with a nice large hook, that's one of the new Armour Rock hooks from Avid. These are due out very soon, I've got a liner liner on there. I've got roughly about 8 inches of hook link, that's 25 pound captive coated hook link. I've taken all of the outer coating off so I'm left with this nice supple braid. I've got a lead clip and I've got a 4 ounce lead. The reason why I've gone for a 4 ounce lead because I'm only fishing about 30-40 yards out is that I want to know that when that fish picks up that hook bait and gets itself hooked, it's going to come into contact with a really heavy lead and it's going to drive it home. You'll also notice that I'm using a large hook bait there and the reason for that is because there's quite a lot of tension bream in this venue as well as a few catfish and obviously I don't want to be catching those. There's also quite a lot of 20 pounders and whilst it won't stop those fish from picking up the hook baits it definitely does give you a better chance of getting through to those bigger fish and uh, these have been purposely made for me by one of the guys on the syndicate Bernie. He's made some large hook baits that are wafters that counter the weight of the hook. 
And that's basically it when it comes to rigs. There isn't a great deal else to say. It's all about being confident in what you're doing. And I've used this type of setup all around the world and it definitely works for me. I'm not very superstitious, but one thing you also need when you're big car option is a bit of luck. And I've just been stood under this pylon having a pee and felt something land on me. And it was a bit of bird muck. So yeah, you never know. That might be a nice little omen that something good's going to happen. I cannot describe to you how humid it is here at the moment. It feels like I'm in Florida because it's really, really warm. It's 34 degrees and although there's no direct sunshine beating down on me, there's a lot of low cloud and it does feel like there's going to be a storm at some stage. Just to hear the pylons above me sizzling away but uh, it's very uncomfortable conditions but just to show that there's a little bit more to carp fishing than just rigs bait and locating where the fish are this session really has been all about determination and the willpower to get through it because it's been really really hard going it's very very warm very tough conditions especially when you're sat just in a nylon bivy like I am and there's no tree cover in this particular swim but I've remained confident in what I'm doing, I've remained confident in the bait, the rigs that I'm using and also in the spot because it's been pretty slow, this particular swim has for me but only a few moments ago I've just landed myself an absolutely corking fish, um, a carp that's known as Schleislands if I get the pronunciation right which means um, fan tail and I actually saw it on the bank last year when Christian Finkelder caught it and it's one of the fish in here that I really wanted to catch and you know it's a corking old carp. It's a little bit down in weight, it was 30 kilos in the spring and it's just weighed in for me now at 62 pounds but if I'm honest it's not about the weight of the fish, it's just to catch one of the really colossal carp that this lake is renowned for so let's take a look at it on the bank now. But absolutely fantastic fish and I'm so over the moon to get it as well so awesome. There you have it, an absolute beast of a German carp, 62 pounds, exactly the kind of fish that I've come here for, it's been absolutely brutal in this heat, but again, it's paid off in the end, persistence, a little bit of determination, and you can have some absolutely monstrous carp, and that is one of them, brilliant, what a great way to end. This is what the Germans do when they celebrate one of the big ones coming out. What is it? Is it champagne, Bernie? Or? Yes. Yeah. Okay. For the first big one. Thank Good you, mate. Job, yeah. Mate. Really chuffed to get it, mate. Thank you for the invite. I didn't get the chance to shout Geronimo because it wasn't over 30 kilos, which is what you have to do on the lake. But hopefully uh, next time that'll happen. But cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers mate. Thanks for cheers, great mate. memories. Yeah. Congratulations. Oh, cheers, mate. Thanks for inviting me. Good All the best. Legend, Good fishing. Good fishing.